class or college? It's a dilemma that thousands if not lakhs students face every year. So how does one resolve this? Is there one size that fits all? How do you make what many have described to me in this last week as the dreaded choice? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Uh, as always, a very special panel of experts are going to help us uh, resolve this issue for you. If you're one of them who are caught uh, in this, caught with this dilemma as well, there's of course uh, Usha Albuka, needs no introduction, education counselor and founder at Career Smart, Dr. Shashi Tyagi, principal, Gargi College, Delhi University, Dr. Uma Shankar Venkatesh, director, PG and Professor of Great Lakes Institute of Management and uh, Sarthak Agarwal uh, who was the CBSE Class 12 topper last year. Thanks uh, very much uh, for joining us. Dr. Tyagi, if I can st start by asking you, you know, there are all those who have, we, we, we've created so few quality institutions even after so many, many decades that there are a handful of institutions really sought after. Everyone ideally would like to study at them, but they can't make it. So the next best thing is, should I just do whatever I can lay my hands on, forget where my skills lie or where my interests lie? How would you sort of resolve this or how would you say is the best way to go about this situation? The first thing, the student should always go for the course. Always? Always. Mo in most of the cases, they should go for the course, even if they don't get the college of their choice. Because initially, if they get the college of their choice, they may be happy for few months, mm. but ultimately they have to perform. Mm. And in the market, they will be judged by the course or the knowledge they have, not by the content. Mm. Also, in most of the postgraduate admissions, mm. there is an entrance test. Mm. So, there their knowledge will be tested and not the from which college they are coming. Mm. But in some courses, mm. like BA program, BSc life sciences or physical science or BCom honors, mm. if the student is not getting admission into BCom honors mm. and the college they are getting BCom program in the same college. Hmm. I think then they can go for that BCom program because there they will also study some of the commerce courses. I see. Dr. Venkatesh, how, how would you sort of uh, help this? I mean, uh, it's a reality of life. Hmm. We have caste system in this country. Right. So therefore, there is a caste system in education. Hmm. There is a caste system in companies that you go for jobs. Absolutely. And there is a lot of uh, reputation attached to all this. Exactly. So when you go to the job, sorry, I just need to interrupt you there. When you, you make a very important point because lots of students have of course been saying that why the college matters or my institution matters is because the job that you mentioned, when you go to a company, then the company is going to look at where I studied and will look at what I studied later. That's the perception. Go ahead, sir. So, so I cannot deny that uh, applicants do think like this, that you know the college is very important. Mm. And sometimes the course is subservient to the college choice. Hmm. But uh, frankly, I would go with Professor Shashi here that you know um, your first focus should be on what you want to do. Hmm. Having said that, after class 12th, I really don't know how many of our kids are really sure of what they want to do. Absolutely. So, like uh, in a private conversation, you just said hmm. somebody from philosophy uh, hmm. doing financial hmm. journalism. Hmm. Uh, frankly, uh, those kind of stories are there for everyone to see. Hmm. So, those who are putting college before the course hmm. may have actually some such idols in their heads right. that you know this works. Correct. So, why not this? He can do it, why can't why I? Why can't I? Right. So, hmm. I won't name names, but Sanskrit honors courses in some colleges are full up hmm. just because they are that college. All right. I see. Right. So, okay. So, so that's that's the reality. Right. Um, would you agree, uh, ma'am? Would uh, you agree to, that to uh, a great extent? Yeah. But I'd like to elaborate mm. on both the mm. points that Dr. Tiagi and Dr. Venkatesh made. One is that course, mm. yes, mm. if you know what course you want to do. Mm. So, if you're very keen on an economics mm. or a BCom, and you're looking at a financial mm. services or a commerce or business kind of a career, yes, I can understand. Then you go for the best course that mm. you can get. But for a majority of students they really don't know what they want to do mm. and uh, college is the learning time right. The, right. the the time in which they're mm. developing a little maturity mm. and confidence and wanting to explore the world and the world of work as well so at that time at that time take the best college you can get mm. which can give you the kind of environment mm. where learning happens mm. where maturity happens where you can network for a connection mm. that will help you with the future with yourself so not everyone has your kind of luck really the cbsc class 12 topper last and all of that but tell me for for those uh, around you in your peer group you must have seen people sort of facing this kind of conflict uh, what's your uh, experience really been you know from someone who's just been there done that and seen others in the same boat how have they really been resolving it uh, so 
one thing right at the at the beginning I should mention is that I've infinitely less experience than my peers at this <laughs> panel right now. But all I can speak from today is from my experience of one year in my college. Mm. So one thing that should be mentioned at the outset is that a college is not just an academic game. It's not mm. just you go out there for the academics. Mm. The overall development you actually get when you are in a college, when mm. you are in a good institute, is like immense. It's mm. not just restricted to a particular area. Mm. It expands to almost all horizons. Mm. So that's one point where Sir and Ma'am also mentioned that mm. you should have an idea of what you want to do. Mm. So I like to go along with Usha Ma'am is because a college really helps you expand the things which you do not yourself know that you have the capabilities to do in, mm. in life. So if you have a course in mind, if you want, if you know, if you know for sure that I have to then pursue this subject thing. in future, right. then go for the course. Right. But, but if you are like slightly tentative, then what mm. I have to do in future, then a college is the best experience to sort out your mind. Dr. Venkatesh, you mentioned that you know children are now choosing, students are now choosing wisely, or so they're, they're sort of aware of their choices mm -hmm. more. Would you mm -hmm. sort of say that that sort of fits in with your experience uh, as well with standing up and saying, no, I, I, I don't think that I can do this. I don't think that making it to the IITs is my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I think uh, my experience has largely been with um, graduate students, that mm. is post graduate yeah, students sure. as we call sure. them. And uh, of late, and I have worked with some of the premier institutions in the mm. country, um, ranked within the top 10 or 15. And my class is predominantly filled with engineers. Mm. Predominantly. I and see. when I say predominantly, it could be as bad as 98% of the class. Wow. If I take a dipstick poll in my class, which mm. I do just for fun, mm. right? Invariably, people say we got fed up because the program I direct right now, uh, minimum 24 months of work experience is required mm. for you to apply. Mm. My class currently has around 3.9 years of average work experience. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So, 100% of the class has work experience, mm. and it is pretty diverse mm. from north, south, east, west. Mm. Students from everywhere, mm. and most of them say the same things that you know. They seemingly, many of them almost detest what they have been doing. So when you say that detest, uh, they detest, a it's, a, it's a strong word. They almost seemingly detest what they have done. You know. So the point is that if you probe them a little bit, um, they will tell you that this was not their choice, most probably, or they were misled into this choice, or they were not misled. They thought this was it, but then there was no rainbow at the end. There are two things that I see in what you said, uh, Dr. Wenger, is a very important point that you've made. A, a very sad comment on how our students still being sort of made to go through the grind, choose their subjects. But B, the silver lining, I think, which is that they're coming to accept that no, even if I've spent my time, doesn't mean I have to spend the rest 50 years or whatever, 40 years going through it, that I can even course correct even now. Yeah. How would you see this, ma'am? It's quite interesting. Of course, one would imagine that this is now especially in the numbers that Dr. Venkatesh is talking about, so many students just feeling frustrated or sort of, you know, sitting up and saying, what have I done? When a child is born, parents think that my child will become an engineer or a doctor <laughs> or sometime now CA. They don't think of any other profession right. because they have seen through the, throughout their life that these are the good profession and the noble professions. Mm. And the child is not interested because the child is seeing so many other opportunities in life. Yeah. And he sees, I am passionate about music, I am passionate about uh, film, media, filmmaking mm. or documentary filmmaking, but the person does not want to go into engineering, mm. engineering line mm. or into the IT mm. or into the electronics and it was because of the parental pressure they have joined the IITs or the NITs and uh, NITs mm. and after working for 2-3 years mm. they think that this is not my piece of cake, mm. I have to do something else mm. and they want to sacrifice their 4 years of study, mm. it is not even sacrifice, I think they must have gained something in life by right. studying engineering and their IQ is better, they have better knowledge and they can I think choose any other profession. Right. There is a shift even after 10 years of service, hmm. even after I 15 see. years, okay. they are changing the profession, right. they are leaving their job and starting something else right. in life. Sadak, is this a kind of clarity, I mean I know that you are saying that you have, of course there is a lot of experience that is still to be got and which, which is fair enough, but is this the kind of clarity that you have sort of seen your peers are really having on sort of the road ahead, what I want to do or is it still? I mean, is it still largely that I believe I should do this because I'm told at home or you know around around me that may, maybe this is it because this is now fashionable. There's a lot of money. This is a good good salary coming at the end of this. I mean, h how are people now? How are students like yourself charting the road ahead? So it's pretty much the latter as far as I can say because 
I have been extremely lucky to have my parents and other so other resources guiding me towards the right path, which should be correct for me. But I have seen many of my peers and many of my classmates yeah. who are not quite sure of where they want to go in life, mm. and not 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 only life. Life is like a, a pretty long journey, but right. where they want to see themselves future, at right. two or, at two or three years and right. on a short in, short to medium run. Right. So this is one thing. If you have clarity on everything else, will be sorted because mm. once you can see your goal. You have an idea of how I do and how I want to achieve that. Hmm. So that's one thing that's quite lacking right now. I'm obviously, I'm not the best person to hmm. do an all-encompassing statement on everyone. But this is one thing. If it can improve, it will, it will really solve these problems. How do you believe quickly. it can improve? More counselling, counselling starting early. Like, what is the one thing that you believe was lacking or is lacking that can sort of achieve what you're talking about? Ma'am, so I, I personally feel that it's more to the student to get. to the right resources because you can ga- have like an em- enormous amount of counseling but in the end it's your matter that really helps you if you go on the internet you can find any possible thing that you really want to like mm. if i'm interested in some course i just type it out on google and list all the possibilities and where can i get more information about it do actually i'm glad that in my time i didn't have i mean the internet wasn't what it was because i think i would have been totally baffled and i would have had no clue because there's a whole world of information out there and not necessarily does I mean, at least to my mind, sort of. I I don't know whether that would really figure. I know what you're saying that there's it's all out there. You can you can take your pick, but I'm not sure if that if it really sort of help you, you mean choose too, too the much, best. There's just much. there's just. But too I much. think I think each each one's inclinations are towards would be it. sort of uh, so if you explore clear. the areas that mm. you may be interested in. Mm. If you're going into a career related to uh, communication, mm. you can see how narrow many down those narrow options, it down. Right, right, look at what right. are the pros and cons. Mm. I mean, there are some who want to get into. There was a student who came who wanted to do journalism. Mm. Very keen, she'd all she'd apply to all the journalism courses, and then when I explained to her what are the different uh, areas that she can work in, she said, "But ma'am, I want a nine to five job." <laughs> you know, <laughs> so which means I'm sure you discourage her from course. taking up journalism that moment. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so you know, so which obviously implies that there's not enough awareness, right, right. and this is what Sarthak very rightly right, said. Right. The students themselves have to explore. So know your interests. Let me start from there. Do your homework. We're slipping into a quick break now. I know many of you had some questions. I've got them. We'll try and get them answered right after this quick break. Don't go away. <music> Course or college? That is what we're looking at. So many of you have been writing in to ask, how do you make the How do you make the choice? Well, we are hoping that this program is going to help you answer that. Uh, Usha, ma'am, I'd, I'd like to start by asking. You know, we have had a parent write in to say that uh, I know that my child would like to work in a kitchen, but I'm very clear that he has to do an MBA. It is the course of the present and will be the course of the future as well. What is it that you can say to him? to convince him i'd like to ask you and then dr venkatesh on i think the parents need counseling yeah <laughs> um if he's very keen on becoming a chef mm. today that is one of the fastest growing careers mm. there's a huge amount of uh, requirement for good chefs mm. and somebody who really enjoys being with food and mm. dealing with food and whatever else mm. the career may entail mm. so i would say that MBA is not the only mm. uh, way to success, mm. and this is something that, unfortunately, again, mm. I would say the fault really lies with our awareness in the media, mm. which tends to exaggerate some of the big success stories right. of the MBAs. Mm. Uh, not every MBA is successful. Mm. Not every MBA gets that big six-figure salary, right. and for each one, there are many who, having done that. then feel frustrated because they don't like the job that they're mm. doing mm. there are so many who come who say they're unhappy with what they're doing want to move into something else mm. so i think it's much more important you can be successful when you enjoy right. doing what you're doing right. and then only can you do it well right this goes back to i'd like you to answer that also i mean coming back to your earlier point there was a parent who said that i believe that the best combination is to have an engineering degree and then study management and there is no better <laughs> there is no better combination and my child just has to do it well so that going back to your earlier point no on a slightly funnier note it's good for me and yeah. my institution that's fine yeah. you know but the point is that uh, i think like this chef question mm. right okay um i would also like to counsel the parent mm. that he can go for a, an mba mm. right mm. if that's what mm. you're hell bent upon but let him uh, follow the chef pathway for some time 
Mm. Good MBAs mm. these days mm. uh, demand that you have some work experience, mm. right? right? And if you work for some years, mm. you can get a different perspective. Mm. And uh, 20 years before, it was different. You mm. wanted to do that MBA and be done with it. Correct. Uh, Correct. In a regular flow, right? Mm. But these days, uh, you can always come back to different format, and that's what I would like to sort mm. of bring in. So, Sathak, not to take anything away from your marks, but you know, there are, there are lots of the sense one one gets is that we're still sort of chasing the more sort of more traditional, the more sought after. And you know, I'm not sure how many parents would still say it's cool to be a DJ, it's cool to sort of teach dance, or you know. But, not my job. but yes, <laughs> and it's good if it's yeah, absolutely. If it's good if it's the neighbor, or someone in the you know extended family, but it shouldn't happen in my home. Sort of, it, did you sense that in your peer group, in your you know, in your classrooms, any of that sort of changing? Oh ma'am, maybe it is due to my limited experience because I have not quite encountered that mm. kind of a thing because mm. many of my friends mm. they We're are always clear on what they wanted. They are not exactly clear but they know that if they want something they can go and get it. I like see. Their parents are pretty supportive, mm. their peers are pretty supportive. I mean, I'm completely running out of time but last words uh, from you and I want to again take another question. Uh, this lady writing in to say that uh, three generations of my family have been to one of India's top institutions. She's talking about uh, St. Stephen's and uh, my daughter is not interested does not uh, get ha, does not have the qualifications to make it to the course that she would like to study but there are other courses on offer which might not be up her street but I would love it if she went here too if she doesn't go there it's the end of her family tradition how do I convince her should she be convincing her at all I think uh, parents can convince her by taking a course then she has to do many add-on courses she has to learn many languages and she can do online or offline and then she can do something better in life in place of choosing the career in the same subject mm. because there are so many career opportunities available both in India and outside India. Mm. So and that's an important better, point yeah, I would yeah, imagine for yeah. you know you your generation also to remember that the brand name will only take you so far and then you're on your own. Absolutely true ma'am. I believe that on a personal level it's just a stepping stone. It's mm. you who have to go Mm. right at the top it can just lead you to a platform from where you can see things clearly if, mm. if I might say that way it's right. you have to walk all the long way and just do the drudgery right. and just achieve your success right. so no magic wand this last words Dr. Venkatesh as we wrap to that uh, aspiring Stephanian yeah my, my message is very simple I have been saying this for the last 30 years that I've been in this profession I think you be led by your nose mm. if you like the smell of something mm. go there mm. it doesn't matter the other paraphernalia mm. And uh, one earlier question you raised, big package, this, that, mm. other. I only say this, it's quite intuitive to think it like this, mm. that if you really are interested in something, mm. you will do 20%, 30% more than what people right. usually do. Right. You will stand ahead. Right. And then money will come. Mm. I'd go and speak to students in schools. Mm. I've done at least 200 schools in the last 20 years. And every school, one question elicits the same answer. Mm. How many of you want to become a teacher? None. None. Right. right. And if you keep right. probing them, after some time it says, very little money. Money. Very right. little money. So that's a very important point that you've uh, raised. And can can I just, yes, yes, please, please. please. Sorry. Yes, ma'am, carry on. Uh, now the trend is changing. Even I'm getting many teachers who have worked in the MNC for 10, 15 years and now they want to come back to teaching. Earlier they were not interested in I teaching. See. Yeah. I see. I see. Maybe because of the family pressure or mm. because of the children, they will find that teaching is a better job than the MNC job. But more suited to their, more needs, suited to their needs. needs. So I think we're sort of uh, agree in agreement on the fact that you should sort of honestly assess your interests, your skills know where they lie, be aware, do your homework right and then carry on and, and like, like the point has been made if you like something, if your heart's in it, you are going to sort of go that extra mile to make a success of it. Well thanks all so much for taking our time uh, to speak to us and we do hope that that has answered some of your questions. Keep your queries coming in for the moment from all of us here. Goodbye. Thanks for watching.